entrepreneurship is important for the problems that we face in our country, for the problems that we face on our continent. And I just want to speak a little bit from the heart and say we are very proud that uh, we have been selected as a partner by APSA. Um, APSA is one of the largest banks on the continent. They have enormous influence in everyday people's lives. I think it's easy for us to think of banks in terms of their balance sheet, in terms of market capitalization, in terms of the amount of profits that they make. But we miss the point that that's all possible because of the connections bank make in society. And those connections aren't connections purely at a financial level. So it happens that financing is the mechanism for making those connections. But what banks do, they connect people to their dreams, wishes, and aspirations. Um, and, and I think once we start thinking of banks in that purposeful way, we then have a deeper understanding about why this particular bank um, should be lauded for taking this challenge on, this challenge of entrepreneurship, taking it so seriously and seeking to invest in it. Of course, all banks are investing in entrepreneurship in some shape or form, whether through uh, the loans that they provide, the credit guarantees that they provide, or all manner of products that the banks uh, provide. In this case, however, what APSA is doing is saying we want to take a step back and contributing to creating an evidence base, a knowledge base that is a gift to society. Not a gift to APSA, but a gift to society. So in that way, they're saying, as APSA, we are investing in higher education knowledge creation. So that's what the purpose of this chair is. is. And in so doing, hoping that this evidence base will then be used by society as a whole to generate more and more entrepreneurial opportunities. Some of those entrepreneurial opportunities will be at APSA, I'm sure, but many will be beyond the APSA ecosystem. And I think we need to pause there and reflect on what that means from an African perspective, where few corporations invest in knowledge creation for society. All right. I just wanted to clock that and, and really thank you for having the vision and the wisdom of understanding how important that is. Uh, Louise spoke about issues of inequality in our country. And certainly we are hoping that through the work that we do through this APSA chair of entrepreneurship, we'll go some way towards pushing back on those issues of inequality will go somewhere towards providing tools and mechanisms and ways of addressing economic opportunities in society in such a way that we become more inclusive, more people feel part of the bargain, because as more people feel part of the bargain, society thrives. Um, in, in my case, when I think about entrepreneurship, I'm going to borrow, um, I know be because when Aaron was uh, vice chancellor of a really important university, used to be called Rand Afrikaans University, mm -hmm. um, now known as the University of Johannesburg. By the way, Aaron, I think that's a very clever way to say, where, what, where's your university? University of Johannesburg. You completely destroyed Wits <laughs> University because no one knows where Wits <laughs> is, but everybody knows where Johannesburg is. And so by choosing the branding University of Johannesburg kind of owned the space. When Aaron was in charge of a, a, a University of Johannesburg, one of the things he was proud of was the cultural dimension of the university, particularly the music part of the university, and invested a great deal amount of money in advancing music and culture, also not just for the sake of the culture, but as a form of entrepreneurship. And so let me borrow from that, Erin, and, and talk about how we might want to think about entrepreneurship by linking it to the concept of jazz. And in the concept of jazz, there's an idea that there are three components to jazz. 
this idea of improvisation that many of us, I'm sure, have heard of, and, and then this idea of, of swing that <laughs> some of us might have heard of, and this idea of blues that we might not even always associate with jazz, but when you put those three components together, we are told by one of the leading jazz aficionados in the world called Wynton Marsalis, then you have what he calls jazz. Right? So what is uh, improvisation in relation to uh, entrepreneurship? Improvisation is that space where individual men and women go out there, come up with ideas, and show what is possible. Take risks, make mistakes, fail forward. Right? Swing is where structure is provided, and in the structure that is provided, organizations like APSA, uh, organizations like Gibbs, in partnership, you'll be happy to hear, Faisal, that we have already an existing relationship with Stellenbosch Business School, in partnership with the likes of Stellenbosch, Stellenbosch Business Schools, as well as other universities in East Africa where this particular partnership is taking us, as well as other universities in West Africa, specifically singling out Ghana, in the case of West Africa, and Kenya, in the case of East Africa. But we are not limited to those countries, but I'm just mentioning those specific countries. Um, and we are very proud of the work that we, as a collective, will be providing in the swing. So what does it mean, what, what do we provide in the swing? In the swing, we provide the structure and the support structure that allows for the entrepreneurs who are improvising to be able to fail safe. Because one of the biggest challenges for entrepreneurs, specifically first-generation entrepreneurs, <coughs> is that a safe way of saying it, without racializing the conversation, first-generation entrepreneurs is that you lack a significantly important source of capital that entrepreneurship requires and that is social capital, mm. right? And then this partnership of the research chair will provide you with that social capital, will provide that swing, so that when you put all of these together, you can, in the blues, what is blues about? Blues is about really this source of optimism in moments of despair, right? And so in, because there will be moments as an entrepreneur where you feel like giving up, and, and we suggest that you won't need to give up because you will still have access to this support structure in a partner network, in a platform network that is significantly supported by APSA. So if you remember nothing about what I said, we think that, that this relationship is about jazzing up the entrepreneurial landscape. Right? And I hope you join us and you partner with us as we jazz up this entrepreneurial landscape. I'm very lucky um, to, to also announce that in order, before we were selected, we went through a rigorous process as Gibbs, in that we had to pitch against other players in, in the industry, in the higher education sector, to position why we think we have something unique to offer the relationship with APSA. And I'm glad to tell you that that level of rigor didn't stop just with us. It also continued when we had to select a chair. So unlike, let's say, in a public sector chair where people forget their names, because now chair, the group CEO, and minister, they don't have names after they get those. Uh, here a chair is a, it's a function. It's not the name of the person. <laughs> and so I want you to remember this it's name. <laughs> so when we selected this human being to become the chair, which is a professorial role, mm -hmm. we also went through a very rigorous process. And, and, and there are some really important academics in the room that also competed for this role. And, and I want to thank them for competing for this role. And, 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 and tell them there will be other chairs in future, because um, <laughs> we are looking for other sponsors of chairs. But for the moment, the most worthy of the chairs is Professor Anastasia Mamabolo. Let's give her a round of applause. You will meet Anna later. 
She's not 13 years old. Trust me, <laughs> she just has a very good gene pool. Right? I remember this because when we started our doctorate together, yes, we did our PhD together, yeah. um, she was the youngest in our class. <laughs> and um, she was the first to graduate. Mm -hmm. right? And I think you need, it's really important that you understand that. So some of us are <laughs> slow thinking, slow learning. She's fast thinking and fast learning. She's a lot more entrepreneurial. <laughs> and she did her PhD in, an, in the field of entrepreneurship mindset. Right? Um, and not only did she stop there, so in the past, I would say, eight years since you started publishing, mm -hmm. in the past eight years of publication, Anna has published over 19 journal articles. Wow. That is insane. <laughs> that is excluding all the case studies and books and book chapters, because the gold standard of academic excellence is journal articles, which means she has contributed to knowledge. Now, um, in terms of um, thinking about the value and the quality of knowledge, so you've got the, um, the, 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 the leagues that you participate in in the streets of the townships, then you get into <laughs> the Premier League in terms of different <laughs> levels of participation. Then you operate at the global leagues right, against other competitors. We, we call those uh, different journal quality levels, right? Now, Anna has published in local journals. She's published in international journals, but she's also published in top international journals. One of them being the Journal of World Business, together with her colleague, uh, Helena Barnard, who's sitting at the back there. Um, and in that article of Journal of World Business, which is like top in its field, right? the two ladies won Paper of the Year 2022. Wow. And just to give you a sense, the paper was on the role of religiosity in business in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. So just to put it in context, it does reinserting this concept of spirituality I think we had to call it religiosity because we didn't want, want to call it uh, badimu, you know, because <laughs> uh, the, the people from overseas would never understood this concept of badimu. So we called it religiosity and reinserted this Africanization of knowledge. And I think that's important. And finally, Anna, there's another concept in terms of you get ranked. It's called NRF rated scholars. Anna is one of the young scholars who are NRF rated. And in 2022, one, the Department of Higher Education's, uh, what was it called, Anna? Science, <laughs> Women in Science Awards. So let's please give Anna a big round of applause. So I think we're in good hands in awarding Anna. Uh, and, and it was a joint award made between Gibbs and APSA in awarding Anna the chair of the APSA Entrepreneurship. And Anna will be responsible, and she will talk about this, will be responsible for coordinating partnership relationships within South Africa, coordinating partnership relationships on the continent, and as a parting gift, Faisal and Aaron, Anna is already connected significantly globally, connecting partnership relationships globally. So here it is, as I come to a conclusion, the way we think about partnership, particularly in the space of knowledge and knowledge creation, we don't see it as a source of competitive advantage because we don't believe that you should be competing to create the kind of knowledge required to solve the kind of complex problems we're faced with on this continent. So what we believe we should do is to crowd in as many good ideas as possible from wherever they come. I happen to have mentioned a few, like Stellenbosch, uh, my colleague uh, Louise says, I must tentatively mention a few others, uh, like <laughs> Strathmore, uh, like uh, Kenas University in Ghana, and as well as the University of Ghana, just to, to name but a few. I tentatively, but that doesn't mean we're restricted to those. The key message is, because we think this is a complex problem, it requires 
an inclusive orientation to solving this problem. So as a consequence, our approach to partnership is as long as it meets the stated objectives that Anna will talk about of this chair, we will crowd in all those good ideas. Thank you.